So today's journey, I put it on recording so that everything is okay. Yeah, it is okay. So we were in, uh, we are covering four steps. Step 25, which says, treat hunger, that is a disease. And again, 26 and 27 also covers uh, about food. Step 26 says, uh, let me have a literal translation. And it is a positive one. You beg food as a medicine. So I will tell you what is that means. And that step 27, take food to live. Do not live to eat. You know, that is the principle. Means what? Drop craving for the food. How it causes problems in our day-to-day -day life. So we should go to the word tapa. Tapa means austerity. Austerity means I take a conscious decision in my life on very small things, including the food. So last week we covered the tongue is a sense organ and also a motor organ. You see the tongue? Ah, it works as a sense organ for the taste. How long the taste lasts? I like pizza from that. My honey was saying, Barrow's pizza is beautiful. It's, I like it. He said, I will bring every day. No problem. Not every day. I'm not saying every day. So I said, what you are saying? Indirect way. To hold on. Hold on that craving. Now, there is a beautiful verse in the Gita. Krishna. See, Krishna covers everything. That is why we say, there are 18 chapters, and every chapter of Gita is one school of yoga. And it takes one to years to understand. Brahma Arpanam Brahma Havi Brahmana Brahma Agnau Hutam Tena Brahma Karma Samadhina Brahma Eva Gantavyam You know? For Americans, it looks crazy what he is speaking. But these are the verses and the principles written. First thing to understand, let me go back to my master when I used to live in the Gangotri. Lara has seen the Gangotri, almost 12,000 feet. So in earlier days, almost 20, 25 years later ago, when I used to live with my master, uh, so 25 or maybe 30 years ago. So he used to introduce the traditional principles, and then he used to explain in a modern terminology, but practical. So we woke up in the morning, we had our breakfast, today no lecture, no talk, he said, go to the three houses nearby the monastery. So he told us, then you have to say, with you know, hands and hands extended like this, bhiksham dehi, three times. Bhiksham dehi, the literal translation is, please give me food. Bhiksham dehi. Please give me the food. So that tradition was gone. It disappeared. So what was that tradition? That those people who are seekers on this path, 
they need not to adopt any profession. They need not to do any business. Now we have to do all those kinds of business. You see that. We too, we have to put ourselves on social media. One of my students is doing a lot of posts on the Facebook. <laughs> we have to do it. In those days, those seekers should not adopt any profession. They should go to three houses. And there is a specific kettle or a bowl. So you put you put that bowl over your hands and you say Bhikcham Dehi three times, three houses. So whatever is given by the householders or the homemakers, you have to accept it. You bring it to the monastery, and then we use to distribute among those seekers in the monastery finished. From that tradition came that the yoga experts should not charge any fees. You see that in, even in America, even in our country, we say, no, no, we are, you know, committed to your service, but whatever the donation that you want to offer you can, I'm still asking it. So why shouldn't I ask directly? Anyhow, I'm not going there. So food, so step 26 says, take medicine of bhiksha. And I really enjoyed I did it at least for 10, 15 days only. And then master said, it is done. Now you have started enjoying. First thing that I should get rid of that ego. Second is, second contains, when you beg food from the three houses, because you are a seeker, you bless the householder. You are committed to take care of those householders, because they are helping you to survive on food. So that concept was there. That is why in those days, <laughs> seekers and the monks and the yoga masters never ask, never charge, never used to charge money huh, for teaching. If you don't know, if Stephen doesn't know, and I go to the Stephen house with my hands, you see, what a crazy guy. Get out. Let me call 911. You see that the entire entire system has changed. So I have to adopt myself accordingly. Leave that part. Now the most important part comes. The receiver and giver. The receiver of food is the seeker. The giver of the food is the householder. So seeker's responsibility is to take care of the problems. Nowadays, the problems of anxiety, stress, relationship issues. So seeker used to take care of that. And giver of the food used to take care of the seeker. But go further. Why we had this tradition? So that lies in the mantra that I spoke. Brahma Arpanam, Brahma Havi, Brahmana Brahma Agnavu Hutam, Tena Brahma Karma Samadhina. Means that it is the self which is giving the food. It is the existence is giving the food. Existence is offering the food. So while taking food, you offer the food to the existence sitting deep inside your heart, which is your real nature, and bypass all the preferences, all the ego sense that you see, I have gone to this restaurant, pizza is very good, like the honey was saying, pizza is very good. No. So you separate completely 
intake of the food, ingestion and digestion of the food, you offer it to the existence. Why? Because it comes from the existence. We can cook and bread, we can prepare, but from where the bread is coming, it is coming from the existence. And the existence is pointing out what it is pointing out. The seed becomes the tree, and the tree becomes the seed. Are you aware of this cycle? In modern chemistry, perhaps you might have studied. Did you study nitrogen cycle, oxygen cycle, phosphorus cycle? So we should not attach, give undue significance to the food. Why? Because we have to take control of the tongue, which is a sense organ. Why? Because it may cause lot of problems. That is our next sutra. Next sutra says, take food. No, I translate it as live to eat or eat to live. Think of it. Eat to live or live to eat. So what is the principle hidden in this? The principle hidden that I must get rid of the craving for the food. Craving for the food. Because that craving will enter into the body and it will cause disturbances during the meditation are you getting it so two principles one is that the entire existence is moving naturally creating that cycle be a part of that cycle don't become a possessor and owner of that huh? are you getting it don't become a possessor and owner of that. Now see, I'm answering indirectly. A person asked me, you know it is a corona time. After all, I must earn money for why I am and how I am earning money. You see, it goes to that food. Food means survival. As long as we have an average intellect, we are we have a human intellect, we will have no problem for the food. The basic necessities are fulfilled. I have said human intellect. If you have an animal intellect, then you suffer. Why? Because of the craving. I give you one example. I was reading, I think, three and four months before, a very interesting article, Washington Post or CNN. They have surveyed during the last 50 years in America those who won lotteries. Millions of dollars. And they found out 90% of those people who won the lotteries became beggars. They lost everything. And I'm just summarizing. I'm not going into detail. They are on the road. Think of this. So it is the craving. Food for the craving, wealth for the craving. So these two, three principles. So the first principle that we covered last week, treat hunger as a disease. So when you are hungry, what happens? The mind says, I must have what I liked last week. Last thing that I will add here, uh, whether you do it or not, it's your choice. So in those days, you know, we learned a very small tip. So my master used to say, make a list what you like in food. 50 items or 10 items or 5 items. 
Now make a list what you don't like. How to get rid of the craving. Now you are hungry. Add two items what you like. Add one item what you don't like. Eat it consciously. You will get out of the craving after three and four weeks. Are you getting it? No, 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 I don't like this. So I have my friends in uh, here also. No, 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 I don't like it. You know, what do you like? I will cook. I'm inviting you. Whatever you want to cook, you cook it. Three principles. First, treat hunger as a disease by the food. While taking food, becoming aware of the food, any item, I have to maintain awareness. It's a conscious that food is coming from the existence and going to the existence. I should not go in detail, but you are fully aware. Whatever the food that we eat and whatever comes out goes to the same agricultural field directly and indirectly. It is one cycle that is happening. Now you stop the cycle at one point, you will not get the food. Cycle is there. You see that? Cycle is there. So Master is asking, can I become aware of this cycle? To get rid of the ego. And the third is, we should start thinking consciously, live to eat or eat to live. How many times you have taken your food that you like? 1,000 times? Just say, maybe more than that. So you have 1,000 units of pleasure now? <laughs> Do you have 1,000 units of pleasure now? Think of it. Uh, maybe you have eaten food of your liking 1,000 times. Clear? Why? because you liked it, because you derived pleasure. So do you still have 1,000 units of pleasure? See that. The masters of the Eastern wisdom changes your perception. It doesn't say that you eat this and don't eat this. So because I cannot preserve or I cannot contain or I cannot store, if I say, or I cannot put into the saving account those 1,000 units of pleasure that I got from in eating a food of my liking. Clear? So what are we doing now? What is my next step? What should be my next step? No, no, you are crazy. I have all the resources. That's why. That's why I take it. I can tell you. Understand this. But those who have resources are more sick than who don't have. Nowadays, people die more because of overeating. That includes liking the food that we want to eat, then hunger. Are you getting it? Think of this. But now come to our practice of meditation, because it helps you to keep the body fit, and you are ready for a higher journey of meditation. So these four steps, I will take the fourth step next week. And then four steps comes about the tiksha. Uh, so we will understand what is that the tiksha. 
So let us start our journey of meditation. Eyes are closed. Eyes are closed. Body steady. Now the body will become instantly steady. Because if you have you have followed the previous 24 steps. We will go deeply after completing it, if you all wish. So looking at the steadiness in the body. And look deep inside the heart in the space. So casual and natural, my friends. And then, in that space, Become aware of 1% of calmness, the spark of calmness. The mind says, yes, internally I see that calmness. Become aware. Or if I say so, maintain awareness of the calmness, my friends. And then we settle down as we have been doing it. I'll change the practice gradually. Being comfortable. Move the mind on the neck joint. Be there. Feel the sensation. Being comfortable and steadiness. Shoulder joints. You are there. Who is their mind? You know, sometime in the session happens, I say, move the mind on the shoulder joints. And people think as if I'm saying, move the body to the mind. No. You see? I lack awareness. No. You're not sleeping in meditation. So the mind moves to the shoulder joints. You feel the sensation. You're comfortable and steadiness. Move the mind on the hip joint. Feel the sensation. Being comfortable and steadiness. The entire body, mind is on the entire body. Conscious mind is there. And you experience sensation being comfortable and steadiness. We have not to get carried away by any of such experiences. You may have a lot of experiences. You may have vision of gods and goddesses, colors, beautiful. But we have to bypass them all. Being carefree. Carefree? Free from the cares. Who cares us? The mind. How it cares? With the impurities. No, no, I don't feel comfortable, so let me move. So I move 100 times during the practice of meditation. What it means? It is the mind causing the trouble due to the past impression. So the mind has the thoughts and the feeling that prompts me to action. So I say, these thoughts are different, separate from me. Do you remember the example? You pick up any example, and that will take you to that state of being carefree. The birds are flying. Where? In the sky. Does anything happen to the sky? Nothing. So you are the sky. Or the water on the surface has ripples, disturbances, deep inside. No disturbances, the water is calm. Mind is the same. That is being carefree and being casual. In a perfect casual, as if you are doing nothing. You are simply listening and following. As if I'm driving you to meditation. That's a very subtle aspect we will understand later. That you are sitting on a passenger seat and I'm driving you to meditation. And you are talking to me casually. That is the journey. 
<clears throat> so now we will go to the stage to purifying the mind. Look deep inside the belly button in the space, or you may see in the heart also, you may see in the head also. And start breathing, quick, short, gentle, playful breath from both the nostrils into the belly, but maintain your awareness of the spark of the calmness that is present in the space inside. Continue, quick, short, playful breath. <clears throat> if you maintain your awareness and continue the breathing, you will not feel as if you are exerting. We are not making any effort. It's a playful breath from the belly. You inhale the belly expands, you exhale the belly contracts. Continue. Continue, my friends, continue. You are continue breathing quick, short breath. Stage 2 is dedicated to purification of the mind, raising your awareness and gaining focus. Why? So that we can help the mind go deeper within. We can help the mind to go deeper within. And stop this, start breathing deep, silent and slow, my friends. So now body is steady, the mind is aware of that spark of the calmness within, and you are inhaling and exhaling deep, silent and slow. <clears throat> Inhalation and exhalation is deep silence. So what is that does mean deep? First you inhale into the valley, continue into the rib case up to the throat. And exhaling first from the valley, continue from the rib case and the throat. Lips remain together. You are breathing from the valley and the rib case together. You're breathing from both the nostrils. Now in that state, during exhalation, you start making the humming sound with awareness deep inside the forehead. I discussed about it. You have to do humming in such a manner so that it gives you the vibration, sensation deep inside the forehead. <clears throat> you are not in a hurry during inhalation. Why? It is deep, silent, and slow. But what will happen if I do the deep, silent, slow? You are able to maintain an intense awareness of the mind. <clears throat> and sometimes the mind fires you. You start breathing irregularly, haphazardly. Means coming from the past impression. So you are going deeper. Continue the journey. And even as a teacher, you can understand. I want to finish as early as possible. Nothing like this. We already see the spark of calmness deep inside, and we follow that.
Continue humming, please, with a deep, silent, slow inhalation, and also long, deep, louder humming with exhalation. <clears throat> we want to say goodbye. It's a conscious decision. That also comes under tapa. <clears throat> These steps comes under tapa, austerity. You need not to go to the Himalayas, live in solitude, and do the penance. Penance is a conscious press process, bypassing the crazy mind. And I'll leave the humming, but continue the deep, silent, slow breathing, inhalation and exhalation. <clears throat> so in this step, we want to pinpoint that calmness in the space. So during inhalation, the mind is moving inside the spine from the crown of the head to the tailbone and you are seeing the space and dropping Om Shanti five times. Same thing with the during exhalation, the mind is moving from the tailbone to the crown of the head in the space. So what exactly, why I'm referring the space? So that the mind becomes aware of that spark of the calmness. Om Shanti is coming from outside. You see, if coming from the mind, even if it is a mantra, <clears throat> understand that. So your awareness and attention is more on the space. So what is going to happen? Do you remember being carefree? The sky, nothing happens to the sky. The birds are flying. I watch them. They are moving from one direction to the other, they disappear, still the sky remains. What means? Still the calmness remains. Even you have understood intellectually, my friends, we awaken to this calmness. <clears throat> means what? It is always there. Sky is always there. Even if it is clouded, we know. Even the mind is clouded, we know the calmness is there. That is why this step is given to you. We are going slowly, deeper and deeper and deeper. 
And now leave this, but continue deep silence, slow breathing. Nyasa, the stage three. It becomes a very playful. The mind, you are inhaling, the mind is moving inside the right arm, in the space, from the shoulder to the fingers, when the breath is coming out, when you are exhaling, the mind is moving from the fingertips to the shoulder, and the mind is now fully aware of the highway. What is that highway? Emptiness, space, and calm, where the calmness is. Now you can understand easily why we are giving. I am giving this step. I'll make every step clear to you. <clears throat> no, it's not a modern professional teaching. I'll keep some secret. It's a royal secret. It's an open secret. Continue. Now move the mind inside the left. Inside the left arm. So understand, the breath is vehicle, your car. Mind is the driver. Why, where the mind is driving, while driving, it perceives it is only the highway empty. And even if in the midnight, you have, you are driving in the midnight on a highway, you may see one or two other vehicles, you can easily recognize. Same way in that highway, even if any trouble is created by the mind, you become aware. And when you are aware, when you are aware, that problem dare not touch you. See that? That is the process. You may think it's, oh, it's easy. And that is why you have a beautiful experience, as some of you. You feel that as if you bypass the mind. Now you move the mind inside the right leg. Nyasa, you, you know, the mind will totally forget the body as if there is an infinite space. It is not moving in and out, it is simply a horizontal space. I want you to listen to that experience. It is going to happen. Move the mind inside the left leg. You see, in and out is uh, basically with reference to the body. And then when the mind completely forgets the body or bypass the body, then where is in and where is out? So it comes by regular practice with wisdom. <clears throat> The mind moves the body, no worries, become aware, continue. That is the way, don't get upset. Who is upset? The mind, you are not. Now move the mind inside the spine. From the crown of the head, 
inside you see the space reaching to the tailbone and while breathing out the mind moves from the tailbone to the top of the head <clears throat> And now leave this breath in the stage four. We are looking inside the forehead or the heart in the space <clears throat> and superimpose Om Shanti if any thought comes. I would say for some of you, I see through based on your experiences you have shared, this step makes you almost feel like liberated. Any thought comes, superimpose Om Shanti. Any feeling, any experience, good, bad, high, low, Om Shanti. How is like that? It is like that. You come to my house and I don't know you. I open the door. Who are you? And you say Om Shanti. What do you want, Om Shanti? From where you have come? For every question, my question, you drop Om Shanti. So what will happen to my mind? Because that mind which wants to move outside will stop. It will go backward. It is already within. You will experience abundance, infinite space, or as if the calmness is everywhere, as if the peace is there independent of me? A lot of other. We will continue to deepen the practice. No worries. <clears throat> I appreciate you all. Beautiful. Continue. Om Shanti. Nothing comes, remain as you are. How simple it is.
And now leave this stabby mood to the stays five. Casually move the mind, walk the mind inside the crown of the head, become aware of the space clearly, and then drop on. Walk down inside the forehead. First become aware of the space, then drop on, walk down, casually in your own speed inside the heart, om, inside the belly, om, then walk up inside the heart to the forehead and the crown. Your mind is fully aware, you're not doing anything, but casually you drop. <clears throat> the Om absorbs into the infinite space. And now, <clears throat> look at the breath. The moment the breath goes in, Om. And when you say Om, go to its essence, the meaning. Om is infinite space. Breath comes out, Om. Goes in, Om. Comes out, Om.
and do nothing, remain as you are. <clears throat> Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Bring your mind on the right hand, your mind on the left hand. Take your time, raise both your palms. Place it on your closed eyes, then open the eyes inside and know your experiences. Know your experiences. Bring the hands down. How are you, Lara? I am good. I watched myself with a lot of awareness and I had to bring myself back a lot. But there was just lots of mind chatter, but it just keep bringing it back and get distracted, bring it back. So it's just interesting how every time is different. Every time is different and deeper. Mm -hmm. today, is so much, just, today is much deeper. It was deep and then I would get distracted and then I'd have to come back. Yeah, it happens. Yeah. It will go And it's just watching with awareness. With yes, that. yes. Beautiful. Yeah. How are you, David and Jerry? Uh, you know, it continues to get deeper and deeper. The, um, the word that just comes to mind for me is Teflon because nothing was sticking at all. I mean, there was thoughts coming and going, but they were just doing that. And the, the birds in the sky analogy or Teflon or something was a great way to describe it. And then when we did the um, the OM, uh, breathing in the OM towards the end there, I think it was, it was just like, wow, infinite space beyond belief. It was my, I felt my eyes were just like flickering in the back of my head. Ah, so beautiful. Deep. That's really a deeper, deeper experience. Yeah, we are moving more towards the subjective reality. That is the goal. How are you, Jerry? I'm good. Um, it was concentrated uh, with very little distraction. Um, nothing spectacular happening or not spectacular. Just, uh, yeah. just a lot of calm. Um, and I'm noticing it with my within my days. You know, all the opportunities throughout the day to just practice. So it is affecting our daily life, our attitude, our behavior. Mm -hmm. And that is more important. It means the mind is releasing those past impressions. That is good. How are you, Jonathan and Jordan? Welcome again. <laughs> Um, 
I had a good meditation. Oh, sorry. Um, I had a good meditation today. It was it was a good practice. I think that it got it much deeper for me. But and there were still times of um, like the the mind was trying to distract me or or entertain me. Um, but then I was able to sort of walk it away and focus on the breath. So it was it was really good. It's good. Yeah. Very good, very good. How are you, Jess? Mine was good. Um, it was calm and I didn't feel much distraction, so um, I felt like I was able to be present. Beautiful. Beautiful. Her voice is very sweet. Do you agree? Very? Yeah. <laughs> um, so how are you, Daniel? Uh, fine, fine. So that was quiet uh, meditation for me. Uh, there were like a few thoughts which came and passed away. And I think that today I even slept for a moment because I lost feeling of my body for maybe one, two seconds. <laughs> ah. But it, it passed away. Passed away. Now understand, that's really good uh, practice. So understand that it is the mind that makes my meditation one day successful. And it is the same mind that remains crazy during the practice of meditation, so it does not become successful. So what we are dealing with uh, today's three steps, today's two steps, the last week one step, and followed by another five steps, that how to remove obstacles, what happens, what makes the mind crazy, and how to deal with it. Wonderful. So how are you, Sergey? It was very calm. Every time I feel like less thoughts just come in and distract me. It's, uh, yeah, it's nothing really spectacular. Just like calm, go deeper, 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 deeper. And then somewhere in the middle, I felt like I'm very deep. And then from that side, I'm coming back again. Good. You see that one hour we should educate our mind, you also said uh, nothing spectacular. Uh, nothing spectacular means what? The mind is seeking something outside. I should be able to meet Jesus or Krishna or some other gods and goddesses in the meditation. The answer is no, that will not help you to progress. Now see the other point is also very important. You can contemplate throughout the week. If the peace is my essential nature, if the sweetness of a sugar is always there wherever the sugar goes, what is spectacular in it? There is nothing. <clears throat> so my master used to talk in a different way. You know, sometimes we feel we are meditating, we are an extraordinary person with extraordinary experiences. The moment your mind says you are an extraordinary person, you will fail in meditation. Be very clear, you will fail in meditation. Apply being extraordinary in the material world. It will work. So you are just an ordinary... Why you are ordinary? Peace is my essential nature. It goes with me. But that awakens us to the... our real nature. How are you, Stephen? Um, I, it was uh, really good. Th really good. Thank you. Um, very calm and peaceful meditation. Um, realizing my experience, something for the first time, at least now afterwards and reflecting on it. Uh, when we were dropping the ohm from the crown to the forehead, to the heart, to the belly button, um, I realized for the first time I actually became present 
in those spots first, and then I drop the ohm. And when I did that, I could actually see a ripple of waves after I dropped the ohm in each one of those locations. And it's the first time that I've experienced that. That's a beautiful, that's a deeper. Definitely that's a deeper. Yeah, that's a deeper. It's okay, Sergi. We have already shared the experiences. He has joined the job. So how are you, Sangeeta? Uh, it was very peaceful and when Om Shanti and when Om is doing it, it feels like it's cleansing. Very so, good. It feels good. Yeah, she, so, she, 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 she perceives if she drops Om Shanti and Om, uh, the cleansing is taking place. Yes, she is right. That's a beautiful experience. She is a wonderful... Uh, Women and her husband is also. How are you, sir, Samir? How are you, Terry? I'm fine. I I I was in between. I was aware of. Um, I was kind of in between all these things. Like there was the space. Good. There was the body. There was so you you feel very calm. Yeah, I was kind of neutral. Neutral, good. And I'll just a I'll send you the practice. And Lara, if you can also talk to Terry one day, if you can give her something about her challenges. She is wonderful. So how are you, Tatiana? Is Tatiana there? No. How are you, Samir? No, no, no. Oh, you are there. Okay. Mm -hmm. How are yep, you? I'm here. Hi. Uh, frankly speaking, today is the first time when I got no place to meditate inside. So I did it in public place. Uh, first, my experience. And Guruji told me a year, not a year, a month ago, that in some days there will be no difference to meditate at home or to meditate outside. Uh, first, that's my first experience. But I would like to say that in uh, when we started uh, breathing from tail to crown and back, I uh, lost the 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 place. I found myself in sight, but I still cannot feel the infinity. I try to imagine. That's not feeling, that's just my imagination that I understand. Okay. But today is much more better than it used to be last time. It used to be, yes. We need a regular practice with understanding. <laughs> and that's a good experience today. How are you, Samir, the last one? And then if you have any question, tell me. Sir, I was having a lot of pain in my neck, but uh, although I st I tried to concentrate on your words and my mind was revolving between your words and my pain, but I, I am relaxed. Means it is not that I am not relaxed after meditation. It is right. pain, but I am relaxed. Uh, means meditation overpowered that pain. I think so. That is in a the, good phrase. That is in definitely the last, yeah, that is a good phrase. I remember something in 1932. If you have any question, you ask me other while I'll finish in a minute or so. In 1932, uh, no, there is a, what is that? Encyclopedia Britannica. Yeah, we used to read a lot. So that reference is, that story is written in uh, Encyclopedia Britannica. So Varanasi, which is the oldest city in India, used to be a space, uh, 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 a center of spirituality and discovery. Uh, great scholars and the master used to live there. And that Varanasi was a kingdom. So the qualification to become a king is to reach to the highest state of meditation. 
Uh, that is the background information. Now coming to the interesting part. So he had an appendicitis. It was an acute pain. So doctors were invited from the Britain. It was a British colony at that time, 1932. India became independent in 1947. Anyhow, so <clears throat> four doctors came and, and uh, they asked to the king to lie down on the bed. He said, okay, and now anesthesia. King said, how come? Why you are giving me this injection? No anesthesia, you will not feel pain. I said, don't worry. He said, don't worry. Let me go into meditation. After 15 minutes for one hour, you can do any damn thing to the body. It is, it is published in Encyclopedia Britannica. And after 15 minutes, doctors will scare. So they, 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 they just cut something on the thumb and the blood was coming and his body was not at all moving. You'll be surprised. They did appendicitis surgery. They removed it. They stitched it. And after one and a half hour, he returned to the body again. So don't think that he returned to the body. It means he was out of the body. You know, we normally talk of out of the body experience. He withdrawed in meditation. Your mind is totally withdrawn from the body. But keeping that mind, minimum mind for survival. One part of the mind remains, which regulates your physiological functioning, breathing, respiration, brain functioning. But the rest of the mind, that is crazy mind. That is already gone. I just remember that, uh, think of, Stephen, think of that, that can we, when we reach to that state of the meditation, nothing affects of the world outside what to say of the body. Any question that you like to 